This is Heather Owens, and I'm recording Carol Wilhai on May 18, 2008, for the Carol Remembers Project at the Community Media Center. So, where did you grow up? Where did I grow up? Right here. I, I was born, this house was built in 1910. I was born in 1911, and I was here all my life. I've never had to move. So I say I grew up right here in this house, in the community. And what did the, your farm look like as you were growing up, or your house? What changes have gone on? We had the, the house, with uh, a yard with a fence around it, all the way around the house. And it had a fence there. It was a, a white weatherboard house to start with. And uh, over the years, we had trouble with paint with pee on. So we uh, had somebody come in and put some kind of a siding on it. Asbestos. And we got gypped. They would fly the night, come and done it. And they uh, never really, never really finished it. Up with the high, they didn't nail it very good. And over the years, it curled up and become pretty dilapidated. And the, the yard out there had trees. We had uh, four trees, eight, four, two, four, six, eight trees in the front yard. I think they had a sale on trees, and uh, they sold, they had them, then they had a row of trees down around the side here. And uh, the intention was to have the trees out there and have a walk to the front of the road and come in between these trees into the front of the house, but we never put the, the walk into that. So that was a failure. So these trees grew up. When we were, uh, that was for my time, my uh, older sisters, brothers and sisters, they used to have parties, lawn parties they call them. And they had the, the, these trees out there, they had um, uh, Japanese lanterns. Did you ever hear of them, Japanese lanterns? They put that in, and the light, we didn't have electric lights. We had candles in those trees, and they'd have these lights around in these trees that was for the light. And they would play games out there, and all kinds of games. That was, uh, well, two or three times a summer they would come here, and then they would go someplace else, and did alternate places where they'd go. So that was their uh, get together in the younger days. When uh, I got along, that was almost uh, non existent anymore. The people that uh, uh, you had to sing and, and had a, somebody to lead the, the party, I was about the only one around that done, and I wasn't very good at that. So that was sort of a failure. That, that stopped. The, the porch, this used to be, uh, that was a side porch right there, and above it was a, somewhere was another porch above it. When we would have visitors, they would come to visit my grandmother. She uh, come here when I was two years old, and she made her home there until she lived in 95. So uh, there was 11 of us in this house. And we had this table turned this way, and it'd be 11 of us three times a day, 365 days a year, to get around this table and uh, eat. So it was, it was, it was a chore. They had the, uh, here they had the, uh, uh, the table where they washed the dishes, had a sink there. That was our hand sink. 
Then in 1945, uh, we didn't have any uh, water in the house. The water was uh, pumped up into the summer kitchen. We had a summer kitchen that had a tank up there, and it wasn't high enough to get the water up into the house. So we never had a bathroom until 45. Then we decided that we're going to renovate, took this porch, and I made a kitchen out of it. It used to be, that was a door that were out of the porch. And uh, we put the metal cabinets in, and then they tore them out, and they remodeled the kitchen and put it the way it is now today. The outbuildings were all the same. There wasn't no house over there. We farmed the land right up to this uh, driveway in there. This out here was a, a potato patch once upon a time. And uh, we turned that into a... Pasture. Put a lawn in it. Pasture. You used pasture first. Huh? Pasture. Yeah, pasture. And we had uh, we had the heifers' calves in that, or the cows, either one. We had a, a first time that they ever heard of electric fences. Okay. Hold the cowboy was called. Hold the cowboy. And then we put it around this out here, and we pastured that. Put the calves in there. But uh, then the, the barn. We started farming in 1937. Uh, the barn was uh, the, the same as it is today, the outside, but we tore the inside out and put the stanchions, the cow barn, the old barn was uh, over on, on, on this side of the, the barn. So in order to get a permit, we had to move the cows over on this side. So we put the stanchions over on this side of the barn and that was the beginning of change. Okay. All the buildings were here, except uh, they had a chicken house down there. They called it a brewer house. We had a uh, summer kitchen. Mm, back of this, uh, this used to be a summer kitchen, they called it. I don't know if you ever knew her of summer kitchens. Well, this was a uh, a porch here, it was an open porch, and uh, on the other side of it, they had a two-story building, and up on the attic, they had a big tank where they pumped the water from the wind pump, that pumped the water into that. Then back of it, um, years ago, before they, they had the rub boards, I guess, to wash, you didn't have wash machines, uh, I think no. I think they did have all kinds you turn by hand. You ever see them? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Then they built this piece back of this building, a roof back there about uh, ten foot wide, in the width of this building, and they put a uh, had a, a wash machine then, wash machine with run with a gasoline motor engine. And the next one was a meat house. The next one was a woodshed. The next building was a garage. The next building a chicken house. And then on the other side of that was another brooder house, they called them. In the days of my father, we would kill about eight hogs and we'd put the hands and the shoulders, smoke them, in that building, hang them up on poles in there, rods. And that's where we kept the hands and the shoulders. And they would cure the meat in there, smoke it. Once a year in January, sometime first of January, we would kill a beef. And uh, we would hang it in this meat house. And we'd go out there and we'd one piece off of it, go out there, cut a piece off of it and bring it in here and, and cook it. 
Sometimes we kill beef weigh uh, maybe a, a ton and a quarter, half, they could have been half quarters hanging in there. That would be four quarters. That would be about 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, a thousand pound dress of meat. And they would hang it in there and we'd hack off all that in the wintertime. The winter, we had different winters what you have now when it would, uh, January, it would freeze up and meat you could, uh, sometimes we'd have to chip off if it be froze. We'd have to wait till it thaw out and then we'd take, uh, cut some uh, roast off, and hang out a uh, beef steak, something like that, and, and bring it in here. And of course, 11 people eating around it, they didn't last very long. We, we, we lived off of pork. And, and we butchered, we had uh, the hogs. We always butchered the, the second Monday, first Monday and Tuesday in December. And uh, we would get together, that was a big day. And uh, two days, we'd kill them the first day. Next day we'd do them up and uh, carry them across here, put them in the cellar so they wouldn't freeze. And then sometimes uh, we'd hit a, a spring that it would uh, fall out pretty quick. So we have to uh, coal pack it. You ever hear of coal packing? No. What is coal packing? Well, they, they put in the glass uh, containers, jars, quarts, half a gallon, and uh, cook it. Sealed up, and then you could use that throughout the summertime. We didn't have uh, we didn't have electric. We didn't have didn't know what refri refrigerators were. We had an ice box that uh, we'd go down in the winter time. We had an ice house down here old, below the old house used to be down just down in the road a little ways there. <clears throat> they had a big ice house there. It would be about ten feet deep, only twenty feet long, and it had a roof over it. We would go down in the winter time, cut ice off of the stream, bring it up here and put it in the ice house. And then we would uh, have ice where we wanted to. They had a refrigerator, didn't have electric, but they had a refrigerator. Ice, they had, they had you put chunks in this ice. And that's the way we kept it. And, and, then in the middle of summer, the ice would run out and run up, wouldn't have it anymore. Then uh, the butcher, they had a butcher, Union Bridge, he would come around with a wagon and deliver beef to us about once, twice a week. That was, that was living. So we had, a, we raised our own chickens and we would have a, grow them up and we would cold pack them when we had them and uh, we had the cool and one chicken we go to the cellar bring up a jar of chicken open it up and have chicken any time of the year it was already ready to eat by those jars that was uh, then on uh, my mother we didn't you didn't have uh, well they raised the chickens in the coops. You ever see the little coops about that high, the roof over it, and uh, it was built uh, on a, a, a wooden platform. You would clean the, the well, most of the every day she would uh, turn these coops over, take a hoe, clean them up, raise the baby peeps, the hens we would take for land, the roosters we would eat. <laughs> Wasn't anything for her to uh, chop the heads off of a chicken and kick, pick them, have company come on a Sunday with three or four roosters and bring them out and cook them, fry them. Uh, that was a treat. Fried chicken, sweet potatoes, mashed potatoes, gravy. Summertime, we had uh, uh, 
Lima beans, peas, right out of the garden. We had a big patch that we would uh, farm. We had to use a horse to cultivate it. And then uh, our children, the ch children would uh, take care of hoeing the garden, pulling the weeds. Had a big patch of strawberries out here. So everything we uh, had on the farm, almost we didn't go to the store and buy hardly anything except uh, clothing, shoes for the children, clothing, and things like that. But uh, we had an apple orchard out back of the barn, had an apple orchard there. Down here below the, the chicken house, they had an orchard there, had pear trees, cherries, apricots. We didn't have, didn't have peaches. We never raised peaches. I don't know why. So where did you go to school? Went to school, a detour, you remember? Which way did you come around? Hmm? Which way did you come here? Down, detour? up at, you come through detour down here. Yes, I came through detour. Whenever you come down over the railroad track, the first road goes up to the warehouse, and the next day it was an alley, went back into there. <clears throat> and back this alley, and here was the, the school. They um, just bought a track of land, I guess, out of the neighbor that uh, owned the farm, a little farm, and they stuck a house in there, a one room schoolhouse. Uh, come to find out over the years, the, our playground was on the high school, on the road. That's all we had, a road. Remember when Smith got trouble down here? They were out. They had trouble. We found out that that was the main road. Because back this alley, here was a schoolhouse. There's only a little front end there, about uh, oh, 40 foot wide, I guess. That was our playground. We would play dodgeball. This woman had a, a garden over here. The ball would jump in her garden. We would jump across the fence. We had it mashed down. And we'd go in there and she would be out there, reset it. She was up there, look out the window. She'd holler at us, get us out of there. And the other man had this way over here that had a fence there. The ball would jump over in his garden. He'd come out there, and he was a nice fellow, and he would throw them out for us, bring them out. We didn't have to run in there. He'd run over his garden. So he would be out there and throw the ball out to us. And we'd play and bounce over it again. That's about the only recreation place we had to play. We had a, we'd play a ball up on, the, up on the hill, but it wasn't very big space, but we played ball anyway. Summertime, wintertime, we would, uh, it was a hill there, we would coast down the hill. What do you play? Play a fox and have a big, around the, in the snow, we'd make a path around that. And then we'd make another big one down the side of that. And we'd play, play fox and mouse. We would run around it and uh, it had entrances to from one track to the other, and you could run around on the one, the other one have to run and have to try to catch each other in that. That was our entertainment. <clears throat> how, how old were you when you were at that school in Detour? I started there when it was, we didn't go to school till you were six years old that time. And uh, I was, uh, that would have been, uh, I'm not very good at figures. You stayed there to eighth grade. How long were you there? Till eighth grade? <clears throat> Till sixth, seventh grade. Then where'd you go? Went to Union Bridge then. How? So I got to what education I had, I got in this one room school down there. We had one teacher and she had the six grades. How many students were there? There was usually around twenty, something like that. And then she had uh, reading, writing, arithmetic, spelling, history, music. 
one teacher done all that to all these, had all these grades. But the way they done it was that uh, the older classes would take care of the little younger classes. And that helped out a little bit. But we had a teacher by the name of Christine Coleman. No, Lyra Bowman. Lyra Bowman was the first one from Union Bridge. She was our teacher. <clears throat> now she was a tomboy. We would go up on a hill with a sled. She'd be down on it. We'd jump on her back and come down the hill. And oh, we had a great time. And then uh, <laughs> I remember one time we went over on the detour that has all the hills come into it. Mm -hmm. We went over on the, the hill that goes up to the to New Midway. We came down a steep hill, and a girl, Winifred Coons, we called her, and uh, she got on her sled at the top of the hill, and the man was coming, was down, going down the hill. He had a horse and a buggy. And she got on that sled and went down there underneath that front of that uh, wagon and came out between the, the front wheels and the horse's feet. And she could have been trapped to death. <laughs> and then we used to have a bobsled that they would hold about 12, 10, 12 people. We'd go on, come down that hill where you come into detour, come down there across the railroad track around the corner and come right clear up to almost the dairy here. So we'd fly. <laughs> we went down that way and then one, one time we went up the other hill, get out and they said, uh, you want me to drive? And I said, I don't, I never drove a sled. So another fellow lived across there, cool, you know the cools. He, he drove it. And he came down the hill there, and he went into the snowbank, almost hit the culvert. And he said he never drove one before. <laughs> so we're lucky to be here. <laughs> so that was some of the, well, the, rest of the story. adventures we had. Then we, Railroad. you talk about uh, uh, activities. I went to school there. It's a quarter, about half a mile. We walked that from here down to there. Evening, we come home. Our job was we always had the, you know, a wood stove, set right in here, a big range. When the when it was in there, mail a wood box outside of that. Our job was to carry it in the wood. As soon as we come home, we feel we were supposed to carry this wood in, fill those two wood boxes, I would get the wood. After you went to Detour School, then you went to Union Bridge School. How did you get to Union Bridge School? <clears throat> you went there seventh grade, and you graduated there. We had uh, uh, they had the finally they had the seventh grade in the Detour. Oh. Seventh grade. Now I think there were three of us in the seventh grade: Neoma Myers, myself, and Neff Edmondson were the only three in the seventh grade. Right. Then uh, my sister was uh, two years older than I. She and the Devil Plane girls walked from Detour to Kemar and took a train and would go to Torrentown School, high school. So that when we uh, Seventh got through the, down here. I started Tony Town too. Mm -hmm. We drove horse and buggy from here to Tony Town for two months, and that was too much of a drive for horse and buggy. So we went on the train then to Union Bridge. Took the train. We would leave here at eight o'clock in the morning. Go to school. Started at nine. We got out of school. Go down to the the train didn't come in till 
quarter after six in the evening. So we had a long time to wait from the time of school until the train come up. We would go into the, the Union Bridge to the station there. We would do our lessons. They had a big round place in there, the marble top. We would surround us there and we would do our lessons there. In the evening we come up in the winter time, it would be dark. We walk from detour up here in the dark. No, we didn't have electric. There's no hard road. Winter time, the road would get impassable. You couldn't. You had to use a buggy. You didn't use an automobile. They used the car when the cars got uh, uh, around. We had a Model T Ford. Winter time, they would jack it up and put it out in the shed. And we'd use a horse and buggy to travel. You couldn't get through the roads were so bad you couldn't get through them. So uh, we went on the train for one year. Next year, I think uh, we shared automobile. And then the next year, the man down in Detour, he got a, a bus and he owned it himself and we'd pay him whatever it cost us to go to the train. That's what the fare he'd get out of it. He'd run it on his own. So then, uh, I would, that, that was my transportation to Union Bridge. Mm -hmm. I, How many classrooms did the Tawny Town High School have? High school was the same as they are now. Oh, so. Well, only thing, only thing, we, we didn't have a, our, our, the school Union Bridge was not modern. It was a a big building. It had a, a basement, and then the, the next had a floor, and then up on top they had a roof like that, and then uh, it was divided, divided like that. And we had the freshmen and sophomores on this side, seniors and uh, juniors and seniors on the other side. So that's the way they were classified. Then uh, we had our uh, um, science teachers at school. That was down in the basement. And we had the English teachers on the second floor. And then they had the elementary school and some of, some of it together. And they had portables then for the uh, lower grades. No plumbing. Out, they had an out to the toilets. They weren't very modern. What'd you do for lunch? Lunch? We carried our lunch. Then they they did have uh, the capital down in the home economics. They did have a room there that uh, they'd serve uh, hot dogs and sandwiches baked beans, something like that. You could get it, but uh, we always, we mostly carried our lunch. What types of things did you take for lunch? Gee, that's been a long time ago. <laughs> Sandwiches. What kind of sandwich? And uh, apples, fruit. You didn't have lunch meat, so what kind of sandwich? Ham. Spice ham. Okay. My father used to say that uh, his uh, mother died when uh, he was, uh, I guess maybe eight, ten years old, and he had a sister that uh, took over the mother, and uh, he rolled me the lunch box. She had uh, molasses bread. That's what that was. What they usually had was molasses bread. It was soaked down through the the bread, and uh, she baked the bread. And sometimes it'd be so hard you couldn't eat it. And he always said he just hated sandwiches and never liked sandwiches when he was married. That was at least of his way of living. But they used to have uh, 
make uh, uh, desserts, uh, use uh, tapioca, have molds, something like that. Turn upside down in there. Once in a while, over at Junior Brisbane to school, my mother would give us a quarter. We would go up town and buy an um, oyster sandwich. There's a people down named Goodman. She always had the oyster sandwich, and they were good with quarter for a quarter for sandwich. I remember an immediate detour going to school down there. Spring of the year, it was quite a treat for us to got weather warm. We'd take our shoes and stockings off, come home. Sometimes the stream would be up ready to go out on the road down here. That was a cement abutment uh, in there built along to keep the water out. We would sit on that, stick our feet in the water, and that was that was a real treat. <clears throat> Um, the detour was a, a busy place. Uh, it had a, a warehouse, three stores, two stores, and a butcher shop, bank, and then uh, we shipped milk. We shipped the milk on the train to Baltimore, cans. That was a there wasn't not much of a demand for milk in those days, but uh, we was sent it down there on the train. We did, the train came in a detour. They had a station there. We would take the cans of milk down there, put it on the platform. Train would come on about eight o'clock. Uh, always somebody there to put it on the train, and then the, after it's on the train, they would take care of the cans. Slide them back, ice them up, set them in Baltimore. Summertime, you didn't have ice to cool the milk. It wouldn't uh, cool down right. Set it down there, it was sour. Come back in the evening, they'd take them down here to the station, toss the cans off there on the side of the road. Sometime they would throw one can down, another one on top of it. They would dent them up, they would leak. Sour milk. Yeah. What'd you do with the sour milk? Bring it home, feed the hogs. <laughs> before that, we had, uh, before we got the, the, the train, we did the cows, you didn't make much milk. You didn't raise about one or, oh, well, just a couple of cows, just for your own uh, uh, milk. And uh, we had a, um, a drum back in the, in the pantry there, we call it. It was about that tall, about that big around. And we'd put the milk into that and put some water in it and have it raise the cream up. And it had a glass jar on you. The cream would go to the top. And every day we'd draw this milk off, feed it to the hogs, skim milk. We'd have, skim milk was a no-no those days. Now, now you, you, you drink, drink this, what we used to feed the hogs. <laughs> <clears throat> so then, then as time went on, we got more milk, more cows. Then we had a, a own hand separator. You ever, you ever hear of them? It's, it's a big thing that you turn like that and uh, it, it run wheels, it was run around real fast in there and that would uh, separate the cream. Then we would take that cream and make butter. Had a big drum, not that wide, big, big around like that, and had paddles inside. We would take his cream, put it in there, and sit here in the kitchen and pour and pour and stir it to so get butter. And they would take the butter, make it into pads, and uh, had a, 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 a huckster and detour. He would come around. Oh, once a week, horsing, big horse in the wagon. <clears throat> he would gather up this butter. And if he had anything else to sell, chickens, take them down. He would put it on the train and send them to Baltimore. 
Did you used to make the butter? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They would get it up about once a week. Now, I never liked uh, buttermilk, but uh, a lot of people like it. Still do. You, like you would butter, uh, right? you would churn the butter, and of course it was, had uh, a lot of milk in it yet. It, uh, and you would take a had a had a paddle, wooden paddle, about that broad, and had a hand on it, and you would take it out and put it on a pad and work it, get that milk out of it, and then you would. Be firm, be a pat, about a pound of a, you know, you know pat. And the butcher would gather that, so he would gather that up, chickens, pigeons, whatever he had to sell, take them down and put them on a train and send them to Baltimore. Then the next thing was that uh, 1922, 23, Western Maryland Dairy built this building down here in below the railroad track. And that was a manufacturing for milk. They gathered up milk from Union Bridge, New Windsor, over to Unionville, up at the modern, modern station, and they brought all that milk down here to detour. And there they would manufacture it. They would run it through the uh, separators, take the cream off of it. And they had a big room up on the second floor. They would put this cream in 10 gallon cans, get a train load, a car load. They would set it down someplace wherever they wanted it for cream, made ice cream. They made ice cream down here once upon a time, ice cream. Mix. They made a, had a, they had a, um, they made their own ice down here. It was all operated by steam. 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 Mm -hmm. They had a stream there. They had a big boiler down in the basement. And they fired this uh, boiler, and that would supply the steam for the washer cans sterilized, make this ice, they made cottage cheese. Wow. Yeah, it was quite a place. And then they, what they would do with the skim milk, they would run down the creek <laughs> until the health department got after them. Summertime, they would get rid of steam. The health department got after them. So then, uh, Seal Test bought the, the, the dairy down here. And they built a piece on the end, and they put a, a dryer in there. They, they dried this milk, skim milk, and that's the way they had to handle it. Before that, we could go down there. Before they run the after they stopped them running the creek, we could go down there. And they'd have bring it up in a tank, and after they were all in there. They would open up to the public, and they would have cans. They go down and get the cans, and they 25, 50 gallons, bring it home and feed it to the hogs. Wow. And then uh, it got so that uh, people got a little piggish with it. They weren't satisfied with the cans. They would get a, a big truck and have a big tank on maybe 500 gallon tank. So they would pull it underneath of there and wasn't long until they would take it all. So that cut that out. Uh, then in detour, I was going to say we had a, a blacksmith shop, bank, warehouse, and a butcher shop. It was quite a place. Then they had a big down. Once upon a time, they had a sawmill down there that did run by water, all was powered by water. And they had a a big building there along the side of the creek. I don't know what they, they call it. Grist mill. Uh, Grist mill? Huh? Grist mill? 
Well, they call it a full mill. It's a grist mill. I don't know what they made that. I think they made flour. And maybe, uh, I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know what they make. It was uh, dilapidated at the time that uh, we were in school. And uh, at that time, you had to, uh, we had the, the bridge across, there was an uh, iron bridge across the stream. And you could only cross this bridge by maybe uh, horse and buggies, maybe a ton. Cross Double Pipe Creek? Double Pipe Creek, uh -huh. and they had a ford above it. You would come in down there up to the Warners, come in the field and cross over the stream over the water. Anything that was uh, over maybe five ton, you had to get through the water. Then uh, the, the water got up one spring, had ice, and it, it jammed in there and knocked the bridge down. And they, uh, before they built it for maybe a year or two, they built a, a walkway across it for people to walk, just a walk plank. And Lily Spielman lived out the road a little ways. She came down there to the store. She went across there one day, and the water was up almost to the top of this plank. She lost her balance and went in there and drowned. And that was quite an excitement. They had the people with boats. They went down the stream, one boat against the other one, trying to find her. A couple of days' time, somebody found her down there at uh, about Ligor's Bridge. I think a uh, mailman or something I saw her floating around the water. So that's my uh, experience in Detour. Today, it's a dead town. The mill's gone, bank's gone. A couple, a couple of floods cleaned out the, the town, washed the, they had horse stables and chicken houses Blacksmith. in the alleys, they washed them all away. And now it's a beautiful place. So the flood that did, a, did the town a, a favor. We had, uh, I think, one, two, three, four, five bad floods there. We had first one was uh, they called the Johnstown flood, but uh, you heard of that, and I guess that that didn't cause a detour, didn't cause us any damage, but it was just called the Johnstown flood. That was the first flood. It was up uh, in Dickie Berry's house there, about uh, the shutters. We went up to uh, Johnstown on a tour one day, and they told about this flood. It was a wooden uh, dirt uh, dam. Now the dam would, would, was, was all right; it would have held all right. But the trouble is, they, uh, the people that owned it didn't take care of the spillway. The spillway was you build a dam up dirt. And then uh, maybe up that much higher, then it would be a spillway out around it. it wouldn't go over it. If it go over, it wouldn't want to wash it out. But the people left it grow up, trees grew into it, and uh, they knew that it was going to break, but they didn't pay attention to it. And it finally broke, washed them. But that was, that was the first flood. And then next we had here a detour, I think they called Hazel. That was in 1933. And that got higher than what that one was. And then we had two more after that, El Louise, and what was the other one? Agnes. 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 Yeah, Agnes was the bad one. Yeah. You had to get up over that bridge in Detour, and uh, it had a, a junkyard above it, and they had a tank truck in there, and it floated down over top of this bridge. Detour was was almost uh, almost up to the to the railroad track. You know, this road down here, this come this way, the track, the water was slopping up against that railroad there. So the people that lived in, they moved out. New generation moved in, and then they haven't had any floods in the town. Not too bad. 
Not too bad. But they raised the road. Well, yeah. Just a little. <clears throat> Number six. Do you, want, do you have time? Um, sure. When you were growing, when you were growing up, what was your favorite place to visit? Well, <clears throat> when, when, I mean, we were small children before we had automobiles. We had the church picnic up here in the woods, Keysville, or two miles up the road. Every last Saturday in each month, each year, and the last Saturday in uh, uh, July, we would have uh, a band, and they played a lot of, a lot of times, they would play. The Lloydsville Orphan Home had a, a band. They would come in there, supply the music, have a speaker. The women, they'd have the horses, buggies come in. They'd pull buggies beside each other and they would visit. Dinner time, they would get together, put their lunch out on the table, out on the, the wood, the floor, and uh, eat. And over the years, well, that was got out of date, and they built a uh, pavilion in there. So they used that. Then we had the Lutheran and the Reformed Church together. Then uh, they built the, the Reforms built this building. So they were the ones that had possession of it and said whatever they wanted to do. So they started serving meals. Well, they left the Lutheran church on hanging to themselves, so we went across the road to another woods, cleaned out a place in there, and we had our festival picnic in there. And that lasted for a number of years. And then uh, we had festivals every well, a couple times of summertime, get together, and have a band. Sometimes somebody would come in and sing. Happy Johnny entertained. You never remember Happy Johnny? You don't remember him? No, you don't either. He used to be on the radio in Frederick. And he, would, he and his family would come out and they would play. Then, uh, how'd the Alamovo come in? I remember we would, uh, one of the high spots of the year, we'd go up to Penmore. You never heard of that, I guess, Penmore up in the mountain. People from Balmer City went up there and they had a, a, a amusement park. And uh, they had the first movies that I ever saw. They had a movie there and then they had a, a penny card game. Um, he called Penny, Arcade. put pennies in, turn a wheel. You just be like he was watching a, a movie. Well, that was great. Where would you take somebody if you were going out? Up there. Folks used to come up here from, they were uh, most cousins of my parents. They'd come up here in the summertime. They would spend two weeks with us. And, that was a big time for us to go up to Penmore. Sometimes it would rain. We would be so put out of rain. Where would you take a girlfriend? We didn't have any girlfriends then. <laughs> I don't. I don't know what. I don't know what the the horse and buggy days. They, they didn't go too far. We would entertain them, uh, kids. We would go down to the stream down through the farm, and there was a, a couple of holes down there. It was, oh, the water maybe that deep. We, we could take them down there, skinny dipped. <laughs> we, we didn't think anything about it, us boys, but sometimes they're taking girls down there. But the uh, river boys, they were a little shy on that. We'd get down there and 
They didn't like that in a strip mall. In the evenings, we would go down to the stream here and detour, and we'd go up there in the meadow and go in there and take a bath after working in the harvest field and go over and take a bath. Orville, of course, knew had a, his parents had an automobile. We would get in his car and we'd come down to the Tuck Dorsey had a store there. Six Cokes for a quarter, six pieces of candy for a quarter, ice cream, six ice cream bars for a quarter. We would get in that, he would drive up to the mountain, up, up to Savittlesville in the evening. His parents didn't know it. That was when uh, we would just have time to. Then the entertainment, we had, uh, they had five boys across the road. We had four here. My uncle lived across the next farm over there. They had four boys. Then uh, Fox had a family of, uh, lived across where Charles Tenant House is uh, back in there. We would go over there and play baseball. We played tennis. We didn't have any. Uh, we made uh, take apple boxes. This was apple orchards across here. We had a, they had about a hundred acres of apples, uh, and that was a beautiful thing in the spring of the year. And these orchards would be in bloom, but they would take the boxes that were uh, broke down. We cut them down, put a handle on them, nail them together. That would be our rackets. We come home from church, Sunday school. The boys over there, they'd have the the driveway to Lime Dolph. We'd play tennis right there on the, in this the road. Then later on, uh, they went to the side of the house. Over there used to be a garden. I guess it was a garden. It wasn't used. And they skinned the salt off of it, and they had a side Great court. big tennis court there. And then we had the Eureka. I remember we had the Eureka tennis rackets, and that was quite a difference. They didn't have a background. They hit them out in the road and back over. They kept us busy running after the balls, but we had a big time. We would play there. And after we eat dinner, we go and play, play till on well, Sundays till evening. The hour for us come on home, eat supper, do the milking, work back over and play till it was dark. And that was our recreation. And the, we would play touch football. After we got the job in the car, we would uh, Clyde and I. He was. Uh, he liked sports too. Well, I did too. But we'd go to Western American College. Dick Harlow was the coach down there. We would see him playing football. Wintertime, they'd play basketball, wrestle. Then we got so we went to Baltimore to see professional wrestling. That was interesting. Down at Collins Park. And that burned down, and we, that was the end of that. You you don't remember Carlin's Park? Like on Reisterstown Road. Uh, got it, got it then uh, we right. used to go have a Sunday school picnics. We'd go to Hanover, down to uh, uh, a park out on Baltimore Street there. I forget what they did call it. Yeah, merry ground, Ferris wheel, sliding board. How, how did you get your money to go to all these places? Did you earn money to be able to go to all these places and see all these things? Well, uh, they were free to go there, and you could spend what you wanted to. Ask me about catching skunks. But we didn't, didn't have much money to spend. Richard said about catching skunks. What's that? Catching skunks? Skunks, oh. Yeah, we would uh, trap skunks. <laughs> and that was our, 
at that time you get six dollars a, a skin a hide for them. Well, sometimes over the years we would maybe get a, a dozen. And that was uh, that. And chicken hawks, they had a bounty on chicken hawks. We would catch them, and take the head down into the bank, maybe give it 50 cents for them. Skunks and possums, rabbits, pigeons. We had pigeons, we'd catch the pigeons, sell the swabs to the book of the hucksters coming around. Tim and Clyde did that most of the time. Get 25 cents a pair for them. Um, you could entertain yourself. Didn't have to spend so much money. What What are your memories of the Carroll County Fair? Carroll County Fair first uh, had a fair back. You remember out here where the pond is? It's the Twin Town Road. The pond there. Mm -hmm. Well, there you go back to the woods, across to Krause's Mill Road. You come in Krause's Mill from that place. Or this way you go into there, back into there. So that was the first uh, little fair that they had in there. I remember they had a platform built in there. And the first entertainment I remember there was they had a man on roller skates, roller skating with a big old brown bear. Just imagine that. I think they had him chained fast so he could get away. But uh, they had these roller skates on this bear, Punch and Judy show. Then they had chickens for exhibits. Didn't have cattle or anything there then. Then they outgrew that, and then they went into Tony Town, and they had the fair in, in there, and then they had a racetrack. Fancy house, they called that a fancy house where the the women had displays, clothing, things like that. And they had the show, cattle, had cattle there. That's where Richard, he made his fortune in the cattle. He went in there to show cattle. He would, uh, didn't have patience with them. He would strut around, he would stick them in the belly with his fist. He didn't have patience. I'd last. Dilly's come over. Dilly's lived over here, and Myron had uh, jerseys, and they would lead the jerseys around before the time to show. And they would be so tired when they come to the show ring, they would just lay down. <laughs> so they weren't interested in 4-H. <laughs> that was the end of that. And that's the end of our tape. So that's all the tape. What's that? You talked for an hour. It's an hour? Yeah. <laughs>